Hi there, my name is Scott McDonald, and today I'm going to teach you how to drop in on tramp wall. Learning to drop in can be exhilarating, and it's one of the first major milestones in anyone's tramp wall journey. Whether you're learning tramp wall for your own enjoyment or because you want to perform for a living, dropping in will be a game changer, so let's get started. As with all things tramp wall, wear wrestling shoes to maximize safety and grip. If you can't for whatever reason, go barefoot, but avoid wearing socks because they can slip on the wall. You can expect your neck, leg, and ab muscles to get sore, and you might feel a little bit sunburnt on the back of your head, shoulders, and lower back. This is all perfectly natural and normal, it'll subside with time, but in the meantime you can mitigate the effect by wearing a shirt that covers your whole back, or a back warmer like this one. As a side note, if you've ever dropped in on a half pipe, you're going to find the sensation of dropping in on tramp wall very familiar. Both of them are more about mental commitment and leaning out beyond the point of no return than they are about physical difficulty. Before we get into the actual drills, let's take a quick look at how to use them. Unlike running the wall, where you build height slowly, dropping in will return you to full height immediately. So to avoid any needless self-endangerment, I recommend starting your drop-ins very low and then building height gradually. The only prerequisites for dropping in are being comfortable with high back bounces and running the wall at full height. As a general rule, if you can't wall run to it, don't drop in from it. Another important rule, when doing all the drills in this video, don't just drop in and relax. You need to stay physically engaged and land in the same position as you would when running the wall, with your head neutral and touching the trampoline, arms bent in front of you, knees bent, and feet elevated. If you have a foam pit, you can start by putting a block next to it and practice dropping in without having to worry about the rebound. If you don't have access to a foam pit, put a block next to the trampoline to act as a very short surrogate tramp wall. If that's not an option, just start on the lowest wall you can find. You can incrementally add height as you go once you get comfortable with the progressions. As you go through the drills, start by landing on a large mat on the trampoline, then a smaller mat, and then finally the trampoline itself. Repeat this process whenever you increase your ledge height or move to a new drill. Even when landing on a mat, I recommend trying to rebound straight into a wall run. This will build good habits early on, and you'll get used to controlling your momentum. If you feel unsafe at any point, just move to a lower wall, add a bigger mat, or do whatever it takes to feel comfortable again. My goal with this video is to make dropping in as safe and approachable as possible using what I call the five S's. Spider monkey, support, sit, squat, and stand. These drills will apply whether you're learning on a small block or the 25 foot MJ1 nightmare wall, because dropping in is almost entirely a mental game, not a physical one. When you first stand on top of a tramp wall and look down, the trampoline can seem very terrifyingly far away, so in order to get around that, we're going to start as low and close to the bed as possible and make our way up. With that in mind, let's start with the least intimidating S, the spider monkey. For this one, you're going to start with your hands hanging on the edge of the wall and both feet anchored against the face. When you're ready to go, pull up slightly, get your hips lifted and held away from the wall, let go with your hands, and gently push yourself back. Keep your hands and feet in front of yourself and just wait for the mat to catch you. Aim to land with your body inside the box, replicating the placement of a wall run. For some future skills, you'll deliberately aim closer or further from the wall, but when learning to drop in, your main concern should be avoiding the springs. While this may be the easiest drop to do mentally, physically it's by far the most awkward. I recommend only doing a few to get over your initial fear of dropping in, and then moving on to the next S. For this one, get into a support with your hands on the edge of the wall, resting your hips against the corner. When you're ready to go, raise your hips slightly up and back, place both feet staggered on the face of the wall like you're doing a wall run, and lean your shoulders back beyond the point of no return. Push off gently with your arms, and fall to your back. Even though this is higher and therefore maybe spookier than the spider monkey, it should feel more physically comfortable to do. For this drill, we're going to add a very small turning motion. I prefer to twist left when I do my tricks, so I also turn left when I drop in, but if you don't already have a preferred twist direction, just try both and see which feels more natural. Once you've made up your mind, sit with your knees hanging over the edge of the wall, then pivot in your chosen direction. Catch with your opposite hand in a support, square up momentarily, and drop in just like you did in the previous drill. Practice until it looks and feels like one fluid motion with no pause in the support, and then move on to the next S. 
For this one, you're gonna do a partial squat with your top foot parallel to the edge of the wall, facing whichever direction you turned in the previous drill. Make sure your foot is right here so that when it pivots, you wind up with the ball of your foot on top and your heel hanging over the edge. If you're standing further in, your heel can catch the edge as you drop and tip you onto your neck. Your bottom foot is gonna go over the edge and stay pinned against the face of the wall. This will give you more stability when standing and will act as your lower anchor when you drop in. From here, all you're gonna do is lean your shoulders out over the trampoline, keep your arms in front of your chest, and do a quarter turn to your back. Once you've done that a few times and the initial fear is subsiding, start paying attention to where you're looking. Some people find it natural to pivot on top and then fall in backwards and somewhat blindly, but when you're first learning, I recommend looking at the bed when you drop in, then shifting your gaze to look at the wall where you need to kick for your wall run. Now that you've started dropping in from your feet, you're 95% of the way there, and even if this sounds underwhelming, the remaining 5% is just a matter of squatting less and standing up more. Whether you're squatting or standing fully upright, you want to feel like you're stepping down the face of the wall, then pushing yourself to the bed, not stepping outward. This will help you get a good anchor with your feet and control the angle of your body. Also notice that even if you start facing completely outwards, you can still do a quarter turn as you step off, then finish the twist on the way down. Overall, it should feel minimalistic and smooth. Once you've done a bunch and feel comfortable dropping in from standing, instead of just falling, think about lifting yourself slightly upwards as you step out over the abyss. Just this tiny fix will immediately make you look cleaner and more confident on the wall. When all of this feels natural and you can consistently drop into a wall run, congratulations, you just passed a major checkpoint on your tramp wall journey. Let's take a look at some common drop-in mistakes and how to fix them or avoid them entirely. Make sure you're anticipating the back balance and landing tight with your knees bent and feet up, arms bent in front of you, and landing with your head flat against the bed. Even though standing on the edge of the wall can be scary at first, make sure you're standing right on the edge and not further in. Remember to step down the wall, not outward, and use your feet as anchors. Lastly, when in doubt, use a shorter wall and a bigger mat. Now that you can drop in, here are a few ways to keep improving your skills. You can start dropping in from higher platforms by using a taller wall, or by making your existing wall taller by adding a block on top. You can also learn different ways of dropping in. You can do side drops, vert twists, jump out for a ball out or a pullover, dive in, and so on and so forth. Lastly, you can grab a friend and learn desync drop-ins. Because you have to match timing with your partner, this is a very good way of seeing how comfortable you actually are at dropping in on command. All right, hopefully that's all the info you need to learn how to drop in, but if there's anything I didn't cover or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. As always, please like, share, subscribe, feel free to check out my Instagram at Scott A. McDonald, and until next time, happy training. Peace.